Talking tight here at the Voice of College Football. We do so with our guy Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama. Please join him on the site right there again, touchdownalabama.com, but also on his Monday, Wednesday, and Friday show right here on YouTube. In my own words, it's at uh, 6 Central time again, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Doing great, Mark. Doing fantastic. we got uh, Alabama, Arkansas this week. Nick we are going to honor some seniors and uh, Crimson Tide trying to win the SEC West with the win over Arkansas. Yeah, there are some uh, convoluted um, mathematical equations out there that would uh, take the SEC Western Division away from Alabama if they should lose the final two games against Arkansas and Auburn and finish at five and three, we could have all sorts of a, a log jam scenario, but that is highly, highly unlikely. We will get to the matchup with the Hogs in just a second. Um, on the recruiting front, uh, Damani Jackson, who had committed uh, quite a long time ago to USC has pulled that commitment. Uh, what uh, could that mean for the tide and, and what else uh, is involved there? I know. So, so Jackson, a young man from California, went to the prestigious uh, modern day high school, much like Brown, who's at Alabama, and quarterback, much like Alabama offensive lineman Tommy Brown as well. Well, if Jackson pulling off his pledge to USC, Alabama at this point in high pursuit, they're one of the programs that Jackson has had his eye on. Uh, Jackson and his family, great respect for Coach Davis. Alabama continuing to want to stockpile and recruit on uh, that defensive backfield. As you look at not only Jackson, but also Earl Middle Jr., the four-star corner from uh, Plantation, Florida, American Heritage High School, possibly the number one and number two cornerback in this respective class for 2022. Uh, Alabama trying to get both of those guys. So uh, Alabama right now in pursuit of Jackson, seeing as he's backed off that pledge to SC. Offensive line play for the Tide as we look forward to the Arkansas game, not uh, at its uh, typical dominant uh, self, uh, but that could be helped out uh, this week with some guys coming off the uh, injured list. Well, right now, uh, of course, Alabama, uh, the Tide did not have Darian Dalcourt, the junior, at center last week against New Mexico State, was dealing with a little ankle injury. And then J.B. on Cohan, the left guard, had a wrist injury that he recently had surgery on. Uh, both of those guys were back in practice on Tuesday. Uh, they practiced all week. Coach Saban feels very good about both of those two getting the field. Uh, uh, the question becomes, what combination of uh, four to put with Evan Neal at, at the fifth is going to be on this offensive line? Because last week we saw you know, Damian George at right tackle. I uh, did some good things. The sophomore from Texas. We saw, once again, Tommy Brown at left guard uh, worked out pretty well also. So it just comes down to which combination of guys will Nick Saban and, and offensive line coach Doug Marone put there on the field. But it is good to see Dalcourt back in practice and J.B. on Cohan. We've got an Arkansas team that, of course, had two consecutive winless seasons in the SEC under uh, Chad Morris in steps Sam Pittman, and despite a 3-7 and seven record, that in and of itself against a complete SEC schedule was impressive, but they were even a better football team than the record would it indicate last year. And now they're looking at what's probably going to finish out to be an 8-4 and four season, uh, standing at 7-3 and three right now, wins against Texas A&M, and Texas in particular, um, taking teams like uh, Auburn, Old Miss down to the wire, a win against Mississippi State most recently. Just a, a phenomenal story with Sam Pittman and his first head coaching job able to resurrect this Arkansas football program. He, he has done phenomenal. I mean, uh, uh, Arkansas gets some Nando, somebody special when they picked up a coach Pittman, a guy that was you know, offensive line coach in Georgia for a while there. So, so you bring an offensive mind mentality but somebody tough, somebody physical, somebody hard-nosed. But not just what Pittman's done, but the coordinators he's brought in, uh, bringing over Barry Odom from Missouri to run the defense. Arkansas's got one of the more you know, tough, rigid defenses in the SEC. And when you bring over Kendall Browse to run the offense for Arkansas, and I know people go back to the, to the scandal at Baylor with, with Kendall and his father, Art Browse. But aside from that, Kendall's one of the best young no offensive minds in college football. What he has done 
with K.J. Jefferson, uh, with the running backs at Arkansas, with wide receiver Traylon Burke, uh, the hires that Pittman has made for just the energy he has infused uh, definitely changed the culture in Fayetteville. They're going to miss uh, Jalen Catalan, one of the best defensive backs in the country coming into this game. Um, on offense, K.J. Jefferson, a dual-threat guy. Dominic Johnson, a fine running back. Um, Traylon Burks, one of the very best in college football, um, split out wide. Uh, as you look over the hogs on both offense and defense, what do you see and where do you think they present some concerns? Well, they, well, they present some concerns, Mark. They're going to try to really muddle. They're going to try to really muddy this game up. They want to play tough, physical brand football, slow the game down. Now, Arkansas can, can go fast also with the play call of Kendall Brown and the athleticism of, of K.J. Jefferson at quarterback. But when Arkansas is at its best, it likes to muddy the game up some, get body on body, get man on man, and be physical. And defensively, boy, do they have some thumpers with Bumper Poole and Hayden Henry at linebacker, two of the most hard-hitting linebackers in the SEC. Uh, they got a defensive secondary that can really turn you over intercept the football they feed off the toughness uh, of Barry Odom so that's a concern for me just due to this Alabama offensive line has not really had that complete game yet start to finish where they have looked dominant they've dealt with an injury here or there but we have not just seen that pure cohesiveness uh, from this group that we've seen uh, in years past especially especially last year so an area of concern for me would be uh, the front seven of Arkansas led by Poole, Henry, and also defensive lineman Trey Williams, who's got six sacks on the year for Arkansas. Folks, we would appreciate it if you hit the like button and also check out uh, Stephen's work on touchdownalabama.com and then right here on YouTube, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, uh, his call-in show. You got to check it out. Uh, in my own words, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 Central. All right, uh, the tie taking on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Uh, the Hogs come in at 7-3. and three. Uh, Steven, despite Alabama's dominance since Nick Saban arrived and even some of those great championship runs, uh, at this point in the season, there was always a debate over best team in the country. Even last year's team, once we got to the finish line and they bested Ohio State, sure, everyone was in agreement, this is obviously the best team football team in the country. But at this stage in the season, I don't remember a time when everyone looked at one team and said, they're the consensus best team like we are right now with Georgia. So Bama is obviously on a collision course with the Bulldogs. Uh, there are some mathematical equations out there that could deprive Alabama of that trip, but we won't get into that because it would take a whole lot to keep them from Atlanta. So you mentioned offensive line first and foremost, what else on this team needs to improve for Bama to have a legit shot against Georgia? I think number two, Mark, you would have to look at the Alabama secondary and that not having the not having the busted coverages. They're getting better with that on the back end, but the secondary following responsibility, following pursuit, communication, making sure everybody knows what they're doing and covering each other on the back end, and that's. You know, that's Jagan Armour Davis, that's Josh Jones, that's Malachi Moore, Brian Grant, Jordan Battle, DeMarco Hellams. They have got to communicate and cover each other on the back end. Because we, we've seen at points this season where there's been either a busted coverage on a tight end or a busted coverage play on a wide receiver or, you know, somebody not taking the running back on a wheel route. And when you look at Georgia coming up here down the stretch, they got three really good tight ends. Two of those guys, Bowers and Darnell Washington, number zero, very athletic, very skilled. They run their routes with T, and uh, if you lose them, they are going to burn you. They're going to make plays. Seth Bennett knows how to play winning football for that program. So outside of the offensive line, I look at Alabama's defensive secondary, cannot have the busted coverages here coming down the stretch they got to get that cleaned up all the way it's arkansas straight ahead then of course the iron bowl against auburn before bama makes its way to the sec championship game we got stephen m smith of touchdown alabama on the line stephen as always we appreciate you stopping by laying down the knowledge enjoy the football this weekend absolutely my man take care of yourself mark